All right, so this little semi step, this is in between the retouching. We're going to create one more pass for us, and this is the caustics. I mentioned in the previous tutorial, I was not going to attempt it unless I knew exactly how to explain it and how to make it very simple, and I figured it out. It was actually very simple and straightforward, got on my first attempt, so the concept is that basic. It's nothing about me knowing what I'm doing, it's just that's as simple as it is. All right, so first thing we're going to do is delete all the lights except one light which is our hero light source, which is going to be this guy. So the rear lights, the wheel lights, <clears throat> we're going to remove all that. Now the next thing to mention is what I'm doing here is I'm just going for that cool visual effect. I'm not going for accuracy. So for example, caustics typically works based off of a metals, a sheet metal, car paint, things like that. Tires, rubbers will not generate it. I don't care. I just want caustics. Now in a nutshell, what I'm going to do is double click on this helper, select the whole car. I'm going to create a material called Corona Ray Switch. I'm going to discard the old one. And in basic terms, what this does, it tells me what I want each part of the material to do. The reflection part, the refraction part, the GI part. In 3D, GI is the bounce light. So when you bounce a light source at a wall, and then the light bounces off the wall, illuminates the back side of the room, that's your GI. And direct visibility is what you see in the viewport. So for this, I'm doing a caustics pass. That's all I want to focus on. So direct visibility, we're going to make it a Corona Legacy material, make it pitch black, so zero. Now, for reflection, refraction, and GI, I want it chrome. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to name this chrome, turn on one, 64, and that's it. This is just literally a pure chrome ball. Reason why? I want very crisp, sharp caustics. Now I'm just going to copy as an instance to these other slots above like so. I'm going to copy this, and even though I did mention I don't want it to be, or I don't care about making it 100% accurate, what I will do regardless is just select the tires, because it's very simple, and I'll throw the uh, the black material, which is just a pitch black, no, uh, no generation of caustics, onto the tires. There we go. Now, what last thing we have to do is go to our background, turn off the reflection, so I'm making this value zero, or you can make the color pitch black, doesn't matter. Now our background doesn't have any reflection, and make the diffuse amount about a 6. Press F10, go to the render elements, delete all of our render elements, add a render element called Corona Caustics, go to Performance, Enable Caustics, and that's it. Now we're going to click on R2 Preview so we can see what we're working with. So once it starts generating, we're going to start seeing something occur. So as you can see, now we're getting a little bit of this highlight happening right here. Now let's see what happens when we make our background zero. Pitch black. If we still get the highlights, fantastic. And if we don't, then we have to give it a, some kind of tone. So this is where, okay, even if we put a one on it, you can start seeing the caustics render element. So now what we're going to do is move this light down, like so. As you can see, we're getting some of that spread. We're going to change the light size to make it a smaller dot. This is going to make the uh, the caustics pass a little sharper, kind of like Frederick's uh, BMW shot is. Now what we're going to do is crank this intensity to 500. Now as you can see, the caustics are getting more intense. We're going to select the target, make it point at the side of the car, bring it down some. Now what we're going to do is crank the intensity from 500 to 5,000. Now we're going to change the directionality to see what that does. 0.8, I like 0.7, we're getting a little bit of this overlap. So there we go. So now that we're getting this, like so, next thing we're going to do is just reposition the light to how we think we want to see it. And I kind of like them flying towards the camera, not away. So if we position it something like this, there we go. Let's see what moving it up does. Moving it down. So this is all about, or about opinion of what you think looks cool. So I'm going to make this uh, 15,000 really crank them out. Now let's see what happens when we make the background pitch black, if the caustics remain or not. So as you can see, we need a little bit of tone in the environment for the caustics to fall on. The brighter we make the background, the brighter the caustics pass. It's the matter of the background color as well as the light intensity. So there we go. That essentially is our hero reflection caustics of the car. Now what we'll do is press F9 to start the render process. And I don't really want blue marker layer. We don't need that. So I'm just going to check that. And now we're going to start seeing the caustics render out. And you're going to see them with the, uh, the gray background. And now let's see what the, uh, well, 
there they are. And if we go to the caustics pass, it takes out the gray background and it just leaves the uh, the caustics alone. So in that way, once this render is done, we can use it as a, uh, a screen pass. And one thing we'll do is while we're rendering, press F10, I want to see if they allow the denoising which they do, so apply, and then apply denoising. So all of these are checked, which now means we're gonna get rid of this extra grain quicker when we're done. So that, in a nutshell, is the, cox, the caustics pass. You just let it render away, let it bake. Then when you're happy with the results, you hit on stop. Make sure you do not hit cancel, otherwise it will not denoise. And then we're just gonna composite it all on the next stage, which is just retouching everything together.